My purpose in coming to Uganda this time was to go to the field, to visit some of the foci where river blindness occurs, see firsthand the problems, the successes, but the challenges. Crabs will crawl in there. And to see how the Carter Center can, can do better in helping the Ministry of Health uh, to reach their goal of eliminating river blindness. Crabs are a unique feature for the river blindness situation in Uganda because 85% of the river blindness transmitted in this country is transmitted by the black fly Simulium nevi that needs to have crabs to complete its life cycle. This is a female. The black fly lays its eggs in water, the eggs hatch, and the little wormy things we call larvae must swim around and find a crab. If they don't find a crab, they'll die. If they find a crab, they can get on that crab, form pupae, and from the pupae emerge the adult black fly, which is responsible for the transmission of river blindness. No crab, no black fly, no black fly, no river blindness. This is the Taco River, and on this side we have the Congo, the Democratic Republic of Congo, and we're standing in Uganda. And in the middle of the border are rapids, which are the kinds of rapids we look for for breeding of the black fly, which transmits river blindness. We've found uh, lots of evidence of black flies. We've seen the, the larval stages, the egg stages. I wouldn't be surprised if you got 20 to 25 bites an hour at certain times a day here. That's the kind of biting rate that, that is, will easily sustain river blindness. River blindness in Uganda principally causes skin disease. The eye disease is much less frequent. From that point of view, it wasn't quite the same as Chad and parts of Sudan and Nigeria where the blindness rates could be absolutely horrendous. But the disease is quite a nasty, debilitating disease. If you're heavily infected, it drags you down. The skin loses pigment due to the inflammatory process that river blindness causes in the skin and you get this condition of a spotty rash, a white rash, which we call leopard skin. And you get a tremendous amount of itching. It's difficult to describe this level of itching because it's really reputedly has driven people to commit suicide. The transmission cycle of the river blindness parasite is very tied to the purity of the environment. Change in those elements can disrupt the cycle such that the parasite transmission will, will go away. So after we have finished that, now we set our uh, gauge. We're here on the Katomi River and we are measuring flow rates to be able to determine the best way to dose an environmentally friendly, what we call larvicide, called abate, to kill the uh, aquatic stages, the water stages of the black fly, which live on uh, freshwater crabs. Is it drier under there? <laughs> it will be placed here and it will carry on downstream for three kilometers. You can just see the logistical challenges just glancing upstream here and seeing that three kilometers upstream you're going to have to do exactly what's taking place here. So you can imagine the kind of time and dedication it takes to do that. It's very tough work. Uganda fits into the global effort against river blindness in a very special way. The Ugandan program is trying to completely eliminate the parasite that causes river blindness, which we call Ancocerca volvulus. Take Mectizan. One of the strong things about the Uganda strategy is that it has two components, a vector control group, specialists in insects, which are active in trying to stop the, uh, the black fly from breeding. In addition, the Ugandan program has very strong mass treatment program uh, with high coverage with mechanism, and we've ratcheted up that treatment from once to twice per year to really pressure the parasite. Two. Mectizan is a medicine that is given free of charge by Merck and Company. 
billions of doses having been provided. This medicine is so safe, it doesn't need refrigeration, it doesn't need needles, it doesn't need highly trained people. Uh, the medicine can be delivered by community volunteers to their friends, their neighbors, their family. The river blindness program, be it in Africa or in the Americas, has been a tremendous success. I think it's one of the great success stories in public health. We've seen the numbers of people infected drop by over 90 percent, even in the most difficult areas. And that means that fewer people have visual loss and certainly fewer people are becoming blind. Skin disease has improved. It's really remarkable. The, the concern is that if you stop the activities now, all of the models, all of the disease models show that the disease would come back. So that means we can be very happy now, but if we become complacent, it would mean that our kids or our grandkids would turn around and say, this river blindness is back. What were we thinking about back in 2008? So the, uh, the important thing to remember is a control program is one that never stops. That is the general approach right now for most of the world against river blindness, with the exception of a few areas in Africa and in the Americas. Throughout Africa, the attempt really now is to control the disease, to prevent blindness, to prevent skin disease. In Uganda, the idea is to completely get rid of the parasite and therefore, once and for all, be through with the problem. So, most of us, what do we do? Treatments on this river began about a year ago. Over 90% of the crabs which we collected here had the larval or pupil stages of the black fly, so it was a hot zone. We began dosing monthly and then checking the crabs also monthly, and we found that now, in the last three months, we have not found a single infected crab. Crabs that are clean of the, uh, the black fly larvae and pupae, which indicate that the abate is doing what it's supposed to do. It's not hurting the crabs, but it is stopping the black fly. I think the outlook for river blindness right now is very bright as we really begin to think about the opportunities we have to eliminate, completely eliminate the parasite. Yes, it is possible. Because we have the manpower, if we can get the, the, the funds and the insecticide and the drugs constantly supplied to us, we are able to do it. It's very clear that if you have more President Carter always wanted the Carter Center to work on things that were challenging, to take on issues that potentially could fail but could also potentially be a great success. And river blindness fit into that, that scope of work. And he felt that he would be able to be a great advocate for what was then a neglected disease. I'm happy to say it's no longer a neglected disease. And in this sense, what's happening in the Americas and what's happening in Uganda um, is important as a guiding light to what can be achieved globally against river blindness.